good morning guys so today is Saturday and what I'm doing right now is I'm walking the dog again Darby came and picked me up again today I know I said I wasn't seeing him for a few days but I've seen him like every single day <laughs> can't get away from you guys <laughs> literally can't get away so I'm just walking Lottie right now and then what I'm going to be doing today is mainly showing you guys how I make my prints and I'm just gonna be making some cool prints for my patrons and writing some thank you cards and stuff like that so it's gonna be a nice day of making prints and packaging them all up no Lottie no please don't get up please this don't dog up. is a nightmare she keeps licking every single puddle she goes past and she's getting herself soaked and because she got so muddy on the on the walk she had to have a bath Lottie hates baths she absolutely hates it I mean look at that face so she's back now in her preferred spot we've just had to dry her you tired you're probably gonna go to sleep in the next five ten minutes yeah, I think so too. Now that I'm home, I'm just having a little bit of a late lunch. It's about, what is it, quarter to four. So it's just a little snack because I didn't have any proper lunch. All I've had is two Weetabix today and dinner's going to be in about an hour and a half. So I just thought I'd have a few slices of toast, a little bit of cheese and a packet of crisps. I have just put up my latest vlog. So I'm just going to chill eat this and probably watch some youtube videos i just seen baby j post a new video so i'm probably gonna just sit and watch that whilst i'm actually eating i'm making the prints now and the print that i'm making is the red panda one i absolutely love this print and i'm glad that i can make this one this month for the patrons so the first thing that i do is i open up the photoshop file that i've done if i haven't already like created the file for it i will scan them on my epson perfection v600 scanner and so i will scan them on this if it's a big sort of print that i'm doing bigger than like a4 size then I will do it in four sections each corner and rotate it four times until I've got four images if you've got that if you've got like four separate scanned images and you want to make them into one really perfect whole scan all you have to do is go over to file automate and it is the photo merge and once you click that Obviously I'm not going to be doing it but you'll be asked to browse certain photos and you just pick them and then it just creates a really seamless blending of all of those images. If you've got four like I usually have, it just creates one big image with all of them and it's just so nice to do and it makes it so much easier than you having to try and perfectly align them all up. So yeah, I'm doing this one. It's going to be 8x10 sized. I've already sized it. If you want to make sure that your sizing is correct, all you do is go to image, image size, and then where it says, I do mine in inches, if this focuses, if it says inches, then 8x10, make sure it's above 300 actual resolution, and that will give you a really nice print. I'm using two types of paper for these prints for my patrons because the first thing that they get is the 8x10 medium sized print every month and to do that I use the Velvet Fine Art Paper by Epson, this is amazing paper. 20 sheets of this stuff cost me, I think, I don't know if it's 70 or 100 pound but it's very close to that so it is extremely expensive paper. And it's so expensive that the texture of it almost looks, well, it looks like it can be watercolour paper. But then I also do some, like, thank you cards, and I do, like, mini pieces of art prints on each one. So this is the archival matte paper. It's the A4 size. I'll do four per um, sheet. And so it's the five-star one. It's really good quality, again, by Epsom. And so that is the paper. I'm using both matte. I make sure that my printer, which is the... Sure Colour P600 printer. I make sure that's set on the matte black ink rather than the photo black ink because we're using matte paper. So when I go to print it, there's a few settings that I make sure are correct. Firstly, I make sure that the paper selected is actually correct. So I'm using the Velvet Fine Art paper, which is telling me the end of the printer it's coming from. I also put in the size that the paper is, so it is A3+, plus. like I said, even though the prints are 8x10, I'm going to be using A3 plus size paper and then putting two prints on each side. Make sure the quality, I put it on quality for the 8x10 prints, if I'm doing really large prints, then I do the max quality, but because it's a smaller print, it doesn't need that. Uh, what else do I check? So I just press OK on that. 
and then it will resize it because I've selected bigger paper so then make it portrait and what I want to do is I want this to be up at the top so I go down here and I make sure instead of being centered I'll do something like a 0.2 border on each side so there's a little bit of a white border so I just check the sizes right 8 by 10 Again, you want to make sure that all of these things are right, like the paper needs to be the same on here, so the Velvet Fine Art Paper. So the fine art paper that I use actually loads in from the front, so you just push this. Actually, this printer needs to be turned on. I think the electric got cut. Ah, oh, why are you not turning on? Oh, no. Ah, there we go. Oh, my God. Oh, I was getting really scared then because we have the electricity turned off and obviously I haven't turned the printer on again since. I'm just feeding the paper in and you can see that it'll come out the other side. So now I'm just gonna print it. Also, one thing that I found is that if you are trying to create prints and they are constantly like you know, print and say this much and then they just come out and they don't print out the whole thing. I had this happen so much where it literally just printed like half of the image and it was because I was using a wireless connection and obviously if it disconnects temporarily then you lose the connection and the print doesn't properly print. So if you're having that issue then I really recommend just buying a really cheap cable, it was like three or four pound and I haven't had a print, like not completely print since I've bought a cable. So I definitely recommend that. I really really love watching prints come out of the printer and I especially love the printing ink smell. I'm really really weird but I really like when the prints are doing the smell of the ink. It's just really nice. Yeah. Beautiful. I just think it's really really nice. Really good quality printer. Makes really nice quality prints. Show you the texture of the paper. You can see that it's got a slight watercolour texture which really helps make it look really nice. Look at that, so beautiful. I've got all four prints made now and what I need to do is actually cut them down and package them. So what I actually use to cut them down is this A3 trimmer and I used to just use a metre metal ruler and a sort of Stanley knife. So I'm just going to trim all of them down and then I have these envelopes. So I just have these hard backed envelopes. I also put an extra sheet of cardboard in the back as well just to keep them nice and secure and safe so that they don't get so they don't get damaged in any way. So I'm just gonna start off by trimming it down the middle so that we have two of them so it's now easier to trim them individually. I've just trimmed down all four of the prints and I've also made these cute little thank you cards. What I do is I just make like mini pit bits of like prints and then on the back I write like, you know, thank you for this month's pledge and I hand write all of the patron cards and it's just a nice little small extra print to go in with their print package. So now what I do is I put these, obviously I need to sign it put this in, well write the message on this and then what I do is I put them in display sleeves, little cello sleeves and I just put them in a envelope but that's basically all I do to make my prints. Do you know what, I really do love making prints because it's really nice to think that my artwork is in someone's house like around the other side of the world because most of my prints go to America, to the States. So that's a long way from me in the UK. So it's nice thinking my artwork has traveled and is in lots of different states all around America and all around the world. It's really nice to think. It is now 20 to one in the morning and me and Darby just spent the last few hours really thinking about new video ideas for my main art channel and discussing basically the ways that I'm going to change it and implement all of the things that I was talking to you guys about a few days ago. So we're coming up with some ideas for videos 
colours that I think are going to be really fun and really kind of fresh and new things on the channel. So we're thinking about ways to design the thumbnails and craft the titles and because he's going to be editing these videos we were talking about ways about to make it more interesting like we were looking at other art channels, looking at other videos and picking out things that we liked that other art YouTubers did and how I could apply that to my videos. So it was really nice and really good to research that stuff and have a plan of how I want to go like from now on with my art channels. So that was really nice and because it's 20 to 1 in the morning I'm going to be going to bed soon but I'm just going to answer one of your questions by the way guys if you want to ask me any questions i always pin a comment at the top of the vlog saying like you know ask me any questions and i always recommend if you want to make sure that i see your question and are a lot more likely to answer it that you actually comment your question on the pinned post on the pinned comment because i'm much more likely to see that so any questions that you have post them on the pinned comment that i put at the top of the comment section so the question that I'm going to answer is, do you have any tips on what you do when you feel like your drawings pretty much always turn out like crap and you get frustrated and start to lose motivation, but you really want to get better? Okay, so if you're having drawings where constantly you feel like you're having bad results each time, then I would really try and address what it is that is letting your drawings down. Because you're obviously repeating something over and over and over again that isn't really working out for you. So what I would do is really start to critique your own work and look at your drawings objectively. Sit back and look at them with a fresh pair of eyes, you know, a few days after you've done them and really start to pick out what you think that drawing isn't what you wanted it to be. If it is it the like anatomy, is it the initial sketch, is it the shading, is it the way you've like applied your techniques with your actual shading and the medium you're using, what is it that is not making the drawing that you're doing live up to your expectations? I think that is a really really good place to start and once you've identified what it is that isn't great with your drawing then you can really start to just do practices and exercises that help address that issue. So for example if your problem is your initial sketch, for example if you're drawing portraits and you realise that your proportions and anatomy are constantly off and it just doesn't look realistic, then if you know that and if you've identified that and if you think, okay, my shading's not too bad, but it's actually the initial sketch that is letting me down, then you can just spend lots of time doing lots of practices where you just focus on that one thing that you're doing wrong. It might be frustrating at the start because of the fact that you'll probably make a lot of mistakes because you're trying to tackle the thing that you're weakest on, but you are going to get a lot better and your drawings will improve overall. So, for example, with that example I was talking about, I would go and just try and practice different methods for getting an accurate sketch, trying out all of the possible ways, look on YouTube, you know, practice the grid method, practice using reference points or tracing to help or measuring with rulers and different tools and really start to improve those things that are really weak points with your drawing if it's you know shading or something look at youtube videos maybe you're doing something wrong maybe it's just a simple thing that could really help you improve but it's definitely worth trying to really examine those drawings and identify the mistakes because you're probably just doing that same mistake over and over again and not realizing it practice doesn't make it perfect if you're constantly practicing the same mistakes there is that thing there where instead of saying practice makes perfect they say practice makes permanent because if you just do the same bad thing over and over again, you're just going to make that permanent and it will become a really, really bad habit. So address what's not working, improve on that one thing at a time. You know, if you identify 10 things you're doing wrong, don't try and tackle all 10 things at once. You're just going to get frustrated and feel like you're not making progress. Focus on one thing at a time and once you've mastered that thing, then pick out something else and also identify the things that you're doing well as well to help keep you motivated. But that would be my advice for that. Thank you guys so much for watching this vlog. I hope you really found it useful learning about how I make my prints. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye everybody.